Good morning. This is a screencast to demonstrate how to set up uncomplicated categories on a new site. It's straightforward to set up uncomplicated categories on a, an existing site, but the purpose of this screencast is to go into more detail about what it takes to set it up from scratch. So here I have a Shopify development store. Um, it is absolutely brand new. There's nothing in it. It has no products, um, no navigation, no nothing. Um, and what I'm going to do is to demonstrate how you go through the process of setting up a store from scratch using uncomplicated complicated categories. First step is to get some products. So I'm going to go into the products page. I'm going to import some products. I've got a CSV file here that contains um, an array of products. Import. This will take a couple of moments just to bring in all those products. Great, so that's complete now and you can see here a list of the products I've imported. There's about 50 or so of them in a variety of different um, uh, types, different types of technology. Uh, the next stage here is to set up the navigation. Now in the navigation I want to have my category lists. So if I go through here to online store, navigation, I've got a main menu and a footer. Uh, these are just uh, lists of links that appear on the site. At the moment the main menu appears at the top. Um, so let's have a little look at the site in its current state uncomplicated myshopify.com which is our demo site. So here we've got some products imported into the site but that's not what's showing here on the front page. The front page at the moment is completely unconfigured. There's nothing in the front page collection which is why we're getting this list and it says add some products and so on. Um, we're not going to add any products to that collection now. For now we're just going to look at the catalog which is all of the products in our site to check they're there. And we're seeing a good array of products. There's four pages of them. Um, but at this stage no categories. This is the main menu and down here at the bottom here we've got the footer menu. Next step is to actually create our category lists. So to do that I'm going to go add link list and I want to create here the top level of my categories. So I'm going to call this list categories and I'm going to add some links in here. This is very arbitrary, but it just gives you a sense of what these categories might look like. Now, at the moment, these are all linking to the store front page, and that's because we haven't got any uh, product collections. What I'm going to do after I've created all my categories is to go on and create collections and then link them in. But for now, I'm just creating all the categories as they are. If I go back to the navigation page, I can see I've got my category list here. After I've created my top level categories, I want to create the subcategories that sit inside them. And to do that, I just create link lists with each of these titles. So if I had to create the first link list and call it photography, this will logically sit underneath the photography top level category. Within here, I'm going to put cameras, lighting equipment, and tripods. So going back to navigation, we can see the categories top level menu and the photography sub menu, sub menu that's going to sit underneath it. So I'm going to repeat that process for all the other sections. So I've created the photography, technology and film and TV sub menus and they sit here. I have not created one for home audio because that's just going to be a top level category with no subcategories in it. My next step is to create sub subcategories. So within technology, I'm going to break computers into desktops, laptops, tablets, and servers. And I do that by simply adding another linked list and calling it computers. I'm going to repeat that process now for mobile phones. I do that in exactly the same way. The menu item it's coming off is called mobile phones, so I'll create a submenu called mobile phones. So that's it, I've now created my category structure. The next step is to go into uncomplicated categories and see what that structure looks like. So I'm going to install uncomplicated categories from the App Store. It asks me for my store URL. It's asking here permission, just the kind of things that the uncomplicated categories is going to be able to do within the store. And 
a recurring billing relationship, which you can see here is set up as a test charge because I'm using this in a development store and there's no charge for development stores because they're not customer facing. So here I am in uncomplicated categories. Um, I'm getting some information uh, in a couple of different columns. It's saying at the moment that there's no links available from the navigation and that's because the store is currently using a password. So we've got this box here saying the store is currently password protected and we need to use that password in order to be able to refresh the category list. So I'm going to enter my shop password, refresh category list, Uncomplicated Categories goes to Shopify, pulls all those lists we've just built in the navigation and builds a tree here on the right hand side. Now, this tree shows all of the menus. It, do, it doesn't make any judgment as about where in that menu structure we actually want to create our categories. Generally, the menu structure will contain more than just the category list that we want to use. For example, as I highlighted earlier on, there's the footer menu and the main menu. and We don't want those to appear in the category list. What I need to do next is choose the top level. So work out where in this tree structure I want my categories to begin. If I go from this one and select categories then it will re-render this list on the left hand side and in re-rendering the list it now shows just that part of the tree that I've selected because I've selected here from the top level. Photography, technology, film and TV and home audio and within those subcategories and in some sections sub subcategories. The next stage here is that it's highlighting that my category list um, isn't displayed on the collection pages yet. Uh, there's a little analysis here, the deployment status, and it looks at the current theme to see whether we've included this um, category list so that it's displayed. As it's identified that it's not included, it's also shown here the instructions for how we actually include it. So I'm going to follow those instructions now to deploy the category list. First of all, it says open up your current theme in the admin interface, um, and then select the liquid file for editing. So I'm going to do both those at the same time. And so here is the liquid file for my collection. It's called collection.liquid. Um, and it shows at the moment there's a bunch of stuff. And this all came just in the default theme, um, which is called Launchpad Star, the default theme that came with Shopify. Whichever theme you're using on your site, um, it should be possible to use uncomplicated categories in much the same way. What we do following these instructions is paste the single line of code into the place in your document where you'd like to show a category list and this is the single line of code. So I'm just going to copy that, go into my collection.liquid and paste it in the place I'd like it to go. Um, I'm also going to include a little bit of space around it just because I know in this theme it's nice to actually have uh, a bit of spacing but this should mean that we can actually deploy it. Save and now that collection.liquid has been saved, I can go back into uncomplicated categories. At this point, if I refresh the page, it will redo that deployment check and see that actually everything's okay now. It's deployed quite happily. And so we can go and have a look at the front end of the site. At the moment, each one of these four different links doesn't point anywhere. So if I hover over one, you can see the link is in fact just to the root of my site. What we will need to do is tell Shopify where we want each of those categories to link to. And that means creating collections. If I go back into the admin and go into products, collections, I can now create in here the collections that I want those categories to link to. So I'm going to create a collection for each of the top level categories. I'm going to make the title of the collection the same as the title of the category. And at the moment, I'm just going to manually select the products that are going in there. You can use any kind of collections for this. You can use smart collections based on an attribute or property. Um, but for now, I'm just going to manually select the products. Uh, and I'm also not going to do anything with SEO. I'm just going to leave the collection in its vanilla state. But we'll come back to that later on. So I give the, co the collection a name. Save collection. And now I can add another one. And repeat this all through the... Uh, categories that I've created. So here in my collection list I can see a list of all the top level categories, subcategories and sub subcategories. The next stage is to populate each one of these with products which again is something that will be particular to your store. I'm going to start from the bottom up 
and work up from the uh, lowest level categories up to the parent categories. So now that I've created the collections and added products to them, the next stage is to link my navigation through to these collections. So I'm going to go back to Online Store, Navigation. In each one of these sections, if I edit Link List, I can now use the Links to functionality to say where I want it to go to. It goes to a collection and I can pick out the name of the collection which matches the name of the category I created. So now I've successfully created the navigation, created all those categories and subcategories, created a collection for each one and put the products into that collection and then linked the top level navigation, I the link the link through to that category so that it'll display in our category tree. The next step is to go back into uncomplicated categories and tell it to go and fetch that list of categories so that it'll build a category tree out of the latest navigation. If I go back to this tab, I need to just enter the storefront password again refresh the category list and this list of categories which had before no links, so all the links used to go to the front page now will have a set of links that takes you to each one of the different sections. So now we're in a position to see the category list on the front page of the site. So if I go to, um, to the catalog page it gives me all the products um, and at the top of that list because it's the collection page I can see the top level categories. If I click on a top level category it selects it. It also shows me the subcategories within it. So I can click through to a subcategory. The currently selected category goes black because it's no longer a link. It's actually just part of the page because we can't link to it. We're already on it. Um, and that is the, uh, the subcategory that has the stuff in. So if I'm looking at lighting equipment, I can see some flashes and stuff, tripods, tripods, and each of these is just a normal link as it would be on any collection page. So we can refresh the category list. I just type in the storefront password, only necessary because I have a password set on the storefront at the moment. And I get an up-to-date category list. If I go to the front end of the site and refresh, that up-to-date category list drops into place. So I can flick through these different categories. Now, as well as selecting the categories and nesting them in this way, there are also some uh, classes applied to that category list to make it easy to style. What you're seeing at the moment is a, an absolutely plain, vanilla, um, unstyled list as um, formatted by this theme. Now, any Shopify theme will style it, um, and they will style it in a variety of different ways, but we've made it as simple as possible to, um, for you to style it yourself if there are changes you'd like to see here. So if I first of all highlight the current category, you can see that's not a link anymore, it's actually just a span, um, but it sits within, uh, within a list element that is tagged active. The um, parent element of that is tagged as a super category, super cat. All the other um, peers of that parent are called super cat peer, tagged super cat peer, and the idea is that if I'm in a, a subcategory, I want to see the parent category, but I also want to see the peers to that parent category, so those are tagged, and I can go up the chain as well. If I go up to technology, that's tagged, tagged as a super cat, and therefore all of the peers are tagged as super cat peers. Equally, if I select a subcategory that has further subcategories within it, each one of those is tagged this time as subcat. So we have the active category tagged as active, its parents tagged as supercat, um, and its children tagged as subcat. Categories give us part of the picture, um, and this category list gives us uh, a view of it, but there are a few additional elements that are also um, delivered as part of the Uncomplicated Categories app to make your navigation uh, that much better. So let's have a look at some of those additional elements. Um, if I go back to Uncomplicated Categories and I edit my collection page, I can change the 
liquid to include some of those other elements. Um, we've currently got the category list. I'm going to also change out the existing breadcrumb for an uncomplicated categories breadcrumb. So now that we've replaced that, we can go into a category such as photography and the breadcrumb looks pretty similar. That's what it looked like before. However, when we go into a subcategory, all of the parent categories for that subcategory are being shown. Um, and this is all dynamic. So we can use the navigation from the breadcrumb or we can use the navigation from the category list to reach the same place. And these things stay, stay synchronized. So if I change using the breadcrumb, it updates category list and vice versa. There is a third piece of HTML that you can include in your navigation, also as part of the Uncomplicated Categories app, which is called the Jump To. And this is a little select box that allows you to jump straight to a category. So I click Edit here to go and edit the collection pages. Much in the same way we inserted the breadcrumb, we're going to insert the Jump To by um, adding a single line of liquid. Great, that loads. Um, so I'll put it in here, I'll put it just above um, just above the list for now. And now that we've refreshed the page, we can see the select box here underneath the breadcrumb. This is not a, a layout that you might use all the time, but it's a layout that I think illustrates the functionality of this app. Um, this select box, might you might tidy into your navigation over here. The breadcrumb, you probably drop down. This might form the basis of a left-hand column. But um, the aim of this screencast was to show the most simple example of all these technologies working together. So here you can see as we flick between the different categories, the jump to updates, the breadcrumb updates, and they're all synchronized across the site, as is the URL. The last piece in this puzzle is SEO. So one of the things we want to introduce us by, by having categories is that the um, the categories should present to a search engine as nested elements within one another. And the way we do that is simply by editing the SEO tab in each one of the category in each one of the collections. So if I go back into the admin panel, so at the moment the link to photography is top level category and so that's fine as is film and TV. Servers sits within computers which is under technology so I will edit website SEO, URL and handle collections and it's currently technology computers servers save, back into collections and uh, now I'm going to repeat that for each one of the collections that uh, exists as a subcategory. All the top level categories are fine but all the subcategories will need updating in that way. Equally you could create them this way if you're doing them from scratch but um, I wanted to illustrate this journey as simply as possible. Finally, we're able to return to the front page of the site, and here you can see all four elements working in harmony. So the URL, the breadcrumb, the jump to, and the category list are all synchronized. If I drop into the ca cameras subcategory, then you can see we drop into cameras there, lighting equipment, and what's happening is photography, lighting equipment, the URL is also being updated because we've nested those URLs. This works to categories, subcategories, and of course any nested subcategories within that. So if I drop down to desktop, I've actually got some desktop computers. Uh, I'm seeing the jump to and the breadcrumb, and I can use different navigation elements to guide me through different sections of the site. Because this stuff's all synchronized, it means that your customers get to choose the way they want to move around the categories within your site um, whenever they want to. That brings me to the end of the screencast. It only remains for me to say um, I want to wish you the best of luck with um, selling lots of products to your customers. And thanks very much for watching.